Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, horror, I've got reviews for you of two Killer Animals books. So these are both books I've read over the last week or so, um, which were very, very different from each other, um, but both feature killer animals. So I thought it would be kind of fun to do a double header review of them. So the first of these um, is uh, Feral by Bertrand Rocher, which was published in the UK as The Cats. Um, I strongly suspect that the reason they called it The Cats in the UK is that it was published over here in 1975. Um, so that was the year after James Herbert's novel The Rats came out and was a huge hit. Um, so I think the, the publisher was trying to cash in on the success of The Rats uh, by calling this The Cats rather than Feral, which it was published as uh, in the UK, uh, in the US. Uh, and the other book uh, is a book called Bats by William W. Johnston. Um, so Feral or The Cats, as you may have guessed, is about killer cats uh, and Bats is about killer bats. Um, so you know, on paper they sound uh, they sound very similar, and they sound similar to the rats as well. Um, so uh, I did a review of the rats on the channel a couple of weeks ago, and I will be referring to that book because I think that's a book that kind of treads a middle ground almost between these these two books. So let me talk about the the plots of each of them quickly first. Then so so feral um, is about a. Uh, a kind of wealthy family um, in who I think live in New York or somewhere like that, who travel to a holiday home they've got, which is on, uh, where is it, on Long Island. Um, and they, they find a stray kitten and they adopt it. And then at the end of the summer, um, they don't know what to do with it, so they release it back into the world. And when they later return to the holiday home, they find, and it's partly, it's supposed to be, I think, partly connected to their abandonment of this cat, but that being representative of just a general prob problem with holiday makers on the island, um, they find that there are, you know, there's there's a kind of plague of, of feral cats living in the woods um, who start attacking uh, pets and livestock uh, and like deers and things like that, um, and then eventually people. Um, and the story kind of, you know, ramps up um, as it goes on. Um, towards a you know a, a more violent conclusion. Um, Bats, on the other hand, is a, uh, a less subtle book, shall we say, which is about a small town in one of the southern states of the U.S. Um, that is plagued by um, plagued by bats. Um, and whereas um, Feral, I think, tries to be quite realistic. So, you know, the author has thought about this problem that holiday makers, you know, abandon pets and has thought about what that could, you know, what that could evolve into, if you like. And, and it may well have been, a, you know, a real problem. Certainly, if you think about tourist towns that I've visited on holiday in Europe, quite often they you do see a lot of stray animals there. Um, so bats, on the other hand, rather than being, rather than being pets that have gone wild, um, these are, they're, they're uh, they're bats, so, but they are giant, mutant, incredibly intelligent, uh, flesh-eating, rabid vampire bats. So he just, ev every possible thing you could do to make a plague of bats worse, uh, Johnston does to these bats. And, and the book is uh, completely over the top, um, as, well, partly as a result of that, but that's, you know, a, 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 a way of showing how over the top the book is. The fact that these aren't just bats, they're, you know, they're the worst conceivable form of bat. Um, and that that difference really shows the difference between these two books. So, so Feral is very, very, it's quite slow paced. It's quite old fashioned. So it definitely feels like a throwback to The Birds by Daphne du Maurier. So it's trying to be a bit more literary, a bit more measured, a bit more realistic. Um, and, you know, the horror does ramp up a bit, but it never gets that horrific. It's never particularly graphic. Um, and, you know, the problem that Roger has with this book is that cats aren't really that scary. Um, so one of the, you know, the master strokes of the rats by James Herbert, aside from the fact that James Herbert is a very good horror writer, um, is the fact that human, as, you know, as humans, we are instinctively repelled by rats. You know, we think of them as being, you know, 
creatures that live in the darkness, that carry disease and so on and so forth. Whereas cats are creatures that we welcome into our homes um, and keep as pets. So, you know, even if they have turned vicious, um, I think we're never going to be that frightened of cats. Um, bats, on the other hand, you know, like rats, are a, a creature of the darkness and a creature that we are, you know, instinctively kind of wary of. Um, so Johnston has better material to work with, uh, but then he ramps it up to 11 anyway by making them, you know, giant mutant vampire, flesh-eating vampire bats. Um, the other big difference is really in tone. So as I've said, you know, Feral or the cats feels quite traditional. It feels like a throwback to uh, to the birds, which is you know written in the fifties. Um, whereas Bat, which came out I think in nineteen ninety, is much more modern feeling. So you know that this kind of new wave of killer animal horror was kicked off really by James Herbert's book The Rats, um, and Bat's. Um, you know, is, is a progression of that. It's, it's got that kind of paperbacks from hell vibe to it. It's extremely graphic. It's really over the top. It's really violent. Um, the, the the body count is huge. Um, and he just, um, whereas Roche feels like he's trying, Roche feels like he, he thinks he's writing a good book. Um, Johnston doesn't think he's writing a good book. He's just having fun with it. Um, and it is a lot of fun as a result. So, you know, not only have you got the bats, but because they're rabid, um, they can um, infect people um, and other animals. So you get you get rabid people in this book. There's there's a group of kind of Satan, new age, kind of new agey Satanists who live together and all have sex with each other, and they get infected by um, by the, the the rabies um, and kind of go on a bit of a rampage. And then you also get rabid hogs as well. So um, Johnston really throws everything at it and and has a lot of fun as a result. And you get the impression he's just spitballing as he goes along really he doesn't really know where the story's going but he just keeps on ramping it up and up and up um whereas in feral it feels like roche probably mapped out the whole story and very meticulously you know tries to ramp up the tension as he goes along but just never really manages to it's all too well mannered um bats is a lot more fun um, it's it's very entertaining um, and it's very very silly, but but I had a really good time with it. It's got that kind of B movie vibe um, that's hard to resist. The the final big difference between the two books then is is I think and I'm making some assumptions here, but I think it's about the politics of the authors. Um, I was struck in both of them by that. So so Roche was um, I think best known for writing kind of medical essays and things like that and for a long time wrote for the new yorker so he was quite a um you know a, a, an educated guy um and i'm going to assume given that he wrote for the new yorker was was definitely you know left of center in terms of his politics so you know definitely from the liberal side of politics and you do kind of see that a bit in this book in that you've got wealthy people traveling to this small town um, on this island and through their kind of selfishness um, causing havoc um, and you know causing problems for the community um, and also problems for themselves and you do get that sense of kind of liberal guilt in this book from the protagonist the main character who realizes that his own actions in abandoning this cat have caused some of the problems that they face later on in the book. Um, Johnston, on the other hand, is definitely, you know, right of centre, um, definitely a conservative, um, a, a gun lover. So, so the hero of the book is this really over the top um, character who's like ex kind of an ex spy who happens to live in this town, who's got an arsenal of weapons. Um, there's a lot of distrust in the book of people like journalists and judges. So you get judges making terrible decisions about how the the, bat, the killer bat situation should be, should be handled. Experts are frowned upon as well. And I don't know if this is so true in the US or not, but certainly in the UK, there has been in recent years, a kind of wave of public opinion against judges and experts on things and we particularly saw it during the brexit referendum and, and the, the kind of follow-on from that so it definitely feels like kind of a, a stereotypically conservative thing um so yeah you see you see a lot of that um and his his depiction of female characters is interesting so there is a, a really strong female character in bats 
But literally, the first line describing her is about how good looking she is, what a good figure she's got. Um, and naturally, she ends up, you know, with the hero. Um, and then you've got this gang of kind of hippie Satanists um, who um, Johnston definitely frowns upon and, and thinks are a bit ridiculous. And then there's also a very bizarre storyline um, about a um, one guy who's like a white supremacist and another guy who's like a, a kind of Nation of Islam uh, kind of black preacher guy. Um, and this constant battle between them. And um, you get the impression that... Um, that Johnston thinks that kind of uh, extremeness in politics is just a bit ridiculous. Um, and he's, you know, completely unprepared almost to consider anybody's opinion except the kind of quite traditional conservative opinion. So that was it. And, and there's a lot of humour, or supposed humour, to kind of tied into that, which doesn't really work. So that was a bit of a bizarre, um, a bit of a bizarre storyline, but very much um, in line with Johnston's approach to the book generally, which is, it seems, just to write what the hell he wants and, and to hope people enjoys it. Um, whereas Roche is definitely you know, as I said, being a bit more deliberate about things and trying to write something in a particular style. Johnston's just being Johnston. Um, so, yeah, ultimately, I definitely enjoyed Bats a lot more uh, than The Cats or, or Feral. Um, Feral felt a bit dull to me, to be honest with you, um, whereas Bats, whilst it had a lot of flaws, um, was a, a, a much more enjoyable book to read. OK, time for another random book from the shelves. I thought I'd go with a, uh, a creature feature. Uh, so I've gone with Slither by Edward Lee, which is much closer to Bats uh, than Feral in terms of tone, um, as you would expect from Edward Lee. So this is a book about giant killer sex worms, um, which is longer than it needs to be. It's about 100 pages longer than it needs to be, but I did have a good time with it. OK, I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments um, if you've read either of the books I talked about. And also let me know what your favourite killer animals book is. I think mine is probably The Rats by James Herbert but I am also a big, big fan of Slugs by uh, by Sean Hudson, which is definitely more in the, in the kind of Bats line of just going, at, taking everything to the extreme. Uh, but I think it's a really perfect example of that kind of killer animal book. Um, so yeah, anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're really good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.